But as we are talking about things you didn't necessarily see coming, although maybe it makes sense when you look back at some of the draft picks, John Robinson is out. The man on the left as general manager of the Tennessee Titans, just one month shy of his seventh anniversary in the building. He is in his seventh season, and the Titans are in first. They are, yeah, losers of a couple of games in a row, but they are cruising towards another AFC South title. This comes two days after their former wide receiver that traded to Philadelphia, A.J. Brown, torched them, and they lost in Philadelphia. Amy Adams shrunk with this statement. Since becoming controlling owner in 2015, my goal has been to raise the standard of what is expected in all facets of the organization. I believe we've made significant progress on and off the field core of the business, team construction, roster building. I am proud that we have accomplished what we've accomplished in my eight seasons, but I believe, and here's the key line at the end of that first paragraph, I believe there is more to be done and higher aspirations to be met. I want to thank John for his dedicated work to set this organization up on an upward trajectory, and I wish him and his family the best. Right before the holidays, which is obviously, guys, when decisions are made in this league, people get let go. Tom Pelissero, Mike Garofolo with me. Uh, the timing is interesting, Tom. They are in first. They will likely win the division, barring something truly unforeseen. But it does come two days after their former wide receiver, A.J. Brown, beat him for two touchdowns, and this team's lost a couple in a row. What do we know? Well, Andrew, just back in February, the Titans gave long-term contract extensions to both Coach Mike Vrabel and their general manager, John Robinson. Just 10 months later, Robinson is out as GM, and Ryan Cowden, a longtime executive and scout who's been with the organization, takes over on an interim basis. My understanding is what was communicated to Robinson was that ownership was not happy about the direction of the roster that he had assembled, even though... At this point, as you mentioned, the Titans are 7-5, and five, and they've got a more than three-game lead in the AFC South division. Certainly, as you look through Robinson's drafts, he's had some big hits. He drafted Derrick Henry and A.J. Brown. He drafted Harold Landry. He also had some high-profile misses, including the likes of Isaiah Wilson and, most recently, Caleb Farley, who has struggled to be on the field. If you go back about a month or so ago, Mike Vrabel spoke in a press conference and was asked about the offense, and he said, if you haven't figured it out yet, this is how we're going to have to play. That was a sign that there was frustration about what they lacked at the wide receiver position, in particular on that offense. Of course, the trade of A.J. Brown back in April to the Eagles did net them a promising young receiver in Traylon Burks, but he too has had some injury issues and has not stayed on the field just two days after that game, and A.J. Brown having more touchdowns and receptions and receiving yards that all the Titans wide receivers combined. The guy who drafted him and traded him, John Robinson, is out in Tennessee. Yeah, let's focus on the A.J. Brown part of this because um, that's really the one thing that you could look at. Again, Andrew, you noted from a timing standpoint and definitely a miscalculation by the entire Titans organ organization, though indications are that Mike Vrabel definitely wanted to hold on to A.J. Brown and John Robinson was willing to part with him relatively quickly. It's not like this was something that was bubbling behind the scenes for months and they had to convince him to trade him away. No, he traded him away and then wound up doing a deal that was in line with basically where he should be paid. It wasn't top of the market. It was dressed up as $25 million per year, but it actually came in south of that. Like, I, I don't know what else you would have expected. I know they said that, you know, he didn't quite fit the budget, but I don't know what else you would have expected to be able to pay a guy of his caliber. He got what he was worth. So that was the miscalculation there. But Tom notes it. Much as there are misses, there are plenty of hits for John Robinson, both in the draft free agency, undrafted free agency, elsewhere. This is a team with a lot of talent, and that's why, Andrew, I know that there are many folks, because we've heard from them, both in the agent world and also in other front offices right now who are absolutely blown away by this, and we keep hearing the same thing. Nah, there's got to be something else. There's got to be something else. Yeah, and don't know if there is, and maybe if there is, it will come out, but you look at the, look at the drafts. Caleb Farley, again, is one that stands out here. Guy had an injury, big, big red flag, Injury concern there. They took him in the first round. He had to stay on the field. Isaiah Wilson played one game in the NFL. That's it. One. He's already out of the league. Jeffrey Simmons, a bit of a risk, but that worked. The 2019 top of the draft, Jeffrey Simmons, A.J. Brown. There is his big hit. That, however, was three These years ago. These are also... Ago. Uh, 
Go ahead. Let me add one more thing. These are also late first round picks. Sure. A lot of these miss for a lot of teams. You know, I and Correct. he took a chance. Wh whatever. Again, there are misses, but there are plenty of hits. This is a head scratcher yeah. from a football standpoint, and, at least. And right. I'll Dave. also add just really quickly here go with ahead. regard to whether. Okay. See you. No, go ahead, Tom. <laughs> no, Finish. it's okay. Move on. Finish the thought. What I what I was just what I was going to briefly add there is with regard to the idea that there is something else, my understanding is. There is not. Now, okay. you did have a high-profile situation yeah. in which offensive coordinator Todd Downing was arrested on suspicion of DUI several weeks ago after a game against the Packers. The NFL has been looking into that situation. There is nothing imminent on that front. What I am told is this was about the ownership's dissatisfaction with the roster at this yeah. stage, and so they move on from John Robinson, who was yeah. signed through the 2027 draft, which means he is still owed over four years of salary. Wow. Mike. Yeah, and, and sorry, I just want, I'm not suggesting that there is. I'm just saying people mm -hmm. are saying that because it doesn't make a, a sense to them from a football standpoint. That's all right. Yeah, they're seven and five. They're cruising to another division title in a horrible division. I mean, let, let's just put it that way. No one's coming for the Tennessee Titans. Let's just call it as it is. Mike, Tom, thank you. And here's John Robinson's resume on the screen yet again here. 63 and 43. If you want to tag wins and losses on a GM's resume. But that second line is significant here. Never had a losing season in seven seasons. And Jeffrey Simmons and A.J. Brown, who's no longer there, obviously, at the top of their position, certainly. You went out, you talked about the wide receiver pieces, Steve Weiss. They got Robert Woods on the cheap from the Rams when they needed to offload his contract in the offseason. Allen Robinson, Odell Beckham Jr. were in their conversation here in L.A. at wide receiver. Um, there have been some misses. But there have been a lot of hits. Yeah, I mean, look, his draft record is probably not radically different than a lot of other general mm -hmm. managers, especially as Mike Garofolo pointed out. A lot of their picks are coming at the back end of the first round. Then also, he's had a couple, at least early in his tenure, hitting guys like Kevin Bayard, uh, you know, in the third round and beyond. But lately, they have not been great. And, and so, you know, I've heard from some some personnel folks who are saying, you know, he, this, this coach clearly is good because they're winning with kind of marginal talent. And then again, the A.J. Brown factor, how he just ate them up against Philadelphia, but also that offensive line has really, really struggled. At one point, this is one of the best offensive lines in the NFL with one of Robinson's picks, Jack Conklin, being part of that offensive line. Conklin is no longer there, though. So it's just weird because of the timing. And let's just say there is nothing else, no personality conflicts, anything like that. One of the reasons why you're saying building the roster better. Now we're coming into the end of the collegiate football season, so now you've got to get a scouting department together to look at a lot of these players, to get your final grades on these players, on guys coming out early in the draft. Getting John Robinson out now and letting somebody take over, maybe you can say that's weird timing, but they clearly want someone else to come in and run that part of things. Also look at free agency and see what they can possibly do, probably because they know this roster is good this year, but after this year, there could be a lot of empty cans in the cupboard, so to speak. The Titans, as we get ready for the 4 o'clock Eastern time waiver deadline, Baker Mayfield's name is in there. They're picking, or rather, they have the 21st slot. So it's not as if they're in the top five here. This is a division leader with the Titans. And the work of a GM at this point in the season, it's all towards the draft. It's yep. all towards the offseason. You're really churning the bottom of a roster for an injured reserve player here or taking a guy off someone else's practice squad. There's not a lot of work to be done. It's all for next year. John Robinson out one month shy of his seventh anniversary with the Tennessee Titans.